Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Bethesda Orphanage Home, a vocational training center and government approved. An orphanage located at 3GF Benin Abraka Road, Ogwa area of Supply Road Bypass by Chinese Iron Road Company, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. It is an orphanage powered by Good Morning Jesus Family Foundation. This documentary delves into the origin and story of Bethesda Orphanage Home, powered by Good Morning Jesus Family Foundation, an internationally certified humanitarian organization. This is a story that sheds light on the inspiring journey of Bethesda Orphanage Home, divinely inspired by Evangelist Ekata Bartholomew, the founder Evangelist Ekata Bartholomew was born in February 1985 in Edo State, Nigeria. Evangelist Bartholomew grew up with his mother in an area characterized by human degradation, poverty, and starvation. Evangelist Bartholomew Ekata experienced high level of pain while growing up, and as a result, it led to the discovery of his unique brand identity, UBI. My name is Evangelist Bartholomew Ekata. And um, by the grace of God, I was born in uh, Urumi, and I grew up uh, in a rural area. Uh, but my father is a native of Uzia. At the time when I was about six months old, and my father dumped me just like a child of half caste. I grew up with pain and a trauma because nobody was there for me. The situation was very critical to the extent that at about 13 years old, I started looking for money already just to survive and um, to have a better, a better future. Evangelist Ekata has always remained a man that is sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. And as a result, through the help of the Holy Spirit, he traveled to Europe in 2009. But while still in Africa, he perceived the mandate of an evangelistic calling which God has committed to him but didn't take the call to heart. God kept perturbing him, but he remained undisturbed and realistically adamant, just like Jonah. Not until after he was in trouble in Italy, which landed him in prison in 2011, that he decided to consider God's purpose for his life. I had the opportunity to mingle with my, a friend of mine. This friend of mine, um, he came to rent the house on my side. And after I rented the house, after one month, the next thing I hear from him that he has traveled to abroad. I just contacted him. He told me how he moved to abroad. And I said, no, how is it possible with somebody that I have? And the next thing, the person told me that he wants to go and look for work for Taraba State. The next thing that I heard that uh, he's going to abroad. And then um, I make up my mind. I said, no, I must go to that abroad. And then uh, going to that abroad, it was another, another, another journey entirely. It was a journey between life and death. God really helped me. We were rescued by the fishermen and then we enter abroad. As I begin to live in, in the land of Italy, one of the day, my, my friend uh, led me into something that put me in prison. It was inside that prison. Then God began to speak to me. That was the first time in my life and I entered prison. And in that prison, I had a revelation. I saw a mighty man Lay hand on my uh, lay hand on my shoulder. He says, "Son, wipe away your tears. I am with you." Then, when I wake up, I find out that it was a dream, and I went on my knees and begin to cry. I begin to cry and begin to cry that the Lord should forgive me, and I make up my mind that as for that moment, I'm going back to what God has called me to do. Evangelist Bartholomew, while in Europe, worked in a dynamic organization which offers the poor access to food without fee. That organization, which still functions effectively to date, runs freely without pause. Because selfless, wealthy, and average citizens do donate on a monthly basis 
towards the smooth running of the organization. Why Evangelist Bartholomew saw the operation pattern of this organization, once again, but a more specific tune, the voice commanded him to return to Africa and replicate what he has seen, and his return to Africa as instructed, formulated, and bettered the divinely predestinated organization, Good Morning Jesus Family Foundation, which today is running the Bethesda Orphanage Home, a very unique home for orphans, the indigent and vulnerable in the society. Dear Padre, Filio Spirito Santo, and stasera, mio cuore è pieno di gioia per vedere tanti di voi stasera. Voi lasciate la vostra chiesa a casa per venire qua per copare the Good Morning Jesus Family Foundation. I had the opportunity to be a place where I was working, and this place now they call it a mesa where people can come and eat and without pay. I was there for more than a year and some months when I was doing this voluntary work. Sometimes I worked 8 hours, 20 minutes for a day without collecting a dime. And then God began to let me know that yes, this thing that you have seen here, you must return back to your old place and then make use of the knowledge that I give it to you. And I begin to look at it, how is it going to happen? I call one of my old uh, old father, I call it a father in the law those days when I was in uh, Nigeria, that it was really a, a mentor to me. Um, and I called him, I said, Now I want to start something of giving to the widows. We started that program in 2016. <laughs> May God bless all of you, eh? May God bless all of you. Amen. 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 And all of a sudden, it was done on me that we must have a place where we can gather children, children that have no hope. We started the program called Good Morning Just Family Foundation 2015 ND Stroke. And then we registered it as 2016. Then we started it. Um, I started really organizing people and um, one, two person, I would gather them together on phone and we pray and do night vigil. We give glory to Almighty God for what God has been doing in this project of uh, Bethesda. Bethesda is a Hebrew word, mean, uh, simply means the name of Bethesda. In English, is uh, the house of mercy. A project God have given to Good Morning Joe Family Foundation. Uh, as you can see, the work is still on. Uh, the weathers, they are working, trying to finish the road. Uh, Why the Promba is um, is his work is uh, in progress, and uh, also the electric electrician. You can see because all this work must be done. All this work need to be done before the the finishing of the decking. You can see the ele electrician. Uh, the work is going on. We give glory to God for His mercy and for His love and for His kindness. And I will thank God for all the people that have been helping us on this work. And our prayer, God of Abraham, will bless all of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Bethesda Orphanage, you are hearing about. It was a, it was a divine, a divine vision from God. We are not connected to any church neither any political party, neither any organization. We are just on them, on our own separate body. And then by the help of the Lord, as um, now we have uh, in the orphanage, we have a vocational uh, center, we build an orphan, the orphanage is also there. The dance and orphanage why the hope is a vocational center, whereby you have a fashion, you have um, a showmaking, you have a computer, you have a conference room, you have a, a music room. There are those who dare to dream of a better future for the orphans, indigent and deprived children, a place they can call home. That has been the dream of evangelist Ekata Bartholomew. It was a rigorous journey, but the dream has come true, a home where hope resides, where the orphans, indigent and deprived children 
find solace, love, and the chance to build a brighter future. The innovative approach taken by the founder and handlers of the Bethesda Orphanage Home in fostering sustainable futures for the orphans is highly commendable. Skilled professionals engage with the children by impacting valuable knowledge in various vocational fields such as fashion design, computer literacy, shoemaking, talent development, amongst others. We don't use our children to do business. We give them the theory square meal that uh, every woman be or every big man children should take. And uh, whether country conscience, that is what we are giving to them. Uh, for the vocational center, we are doing our possible best to even bring out the, the best in the market. That if I if we produce shoe for here, and then when you when you take it to market, they will tell you that this shoe is a quality shoe. If we give you any sewing, and then when you see it, you will know that yes, it is done by professionals. For the computer uh, center, we have a, we designed that also to make sure that if uh, some of them that want to have a, a knowledge of a computer, they can go on that to make sure to enable us so that if tomorrow they are in school, it will not be it will not be a something difficult for them. Those are the things that we do here. Even also. We are working hard to make sure we teach even some of them about instrumentalists. Uh, if you go to our music department, we have keyboard, we have a, a flute, we have those two things there, and then we are still, as by God's grace, expecting to buy more instruments. Especially this uh, new project we are going, we are going to when you come to our music department, you will see all kinds of uh, music because we want to raise children that that will serve our nation and uh, even the Western world. God really answered my prayer by giving me a wife who has passion, who has passion when you talk of about children who have lost their hope. Why? Because she grew up in the rural area also. And she grew and she passed through pain. Glory be to God that when, um, when it was a vision that God gave me the, uh, my wife, and um, after a long period, and I really, God helped me when I'm able to look at her. And as I share my dream, my revelation about God convincing me that she's my wife. And I can tell you the truth. She went to go and pray. And they returned and told me that, uh, yes, it was really the leading of God. I can tell you since we married 2019, by God's grace today, God has blessed us with the two children. We have a daughter. And uh, our daughter is about two, uh, two years plus now. We have our son is about uh, five months plus now. And uh, by the help of the Lord, um, I can tell you, if uh, in the orphanage side, anything, if, I'm, if they want to do anything, I will tell them, go and meet my wife. Because I know the passion she has about it. About uh, three years ago, I heard it to me that um, this place is, uh, is too small for us that I need, to, I need to get a land 700 by 600. And that uh, 700 by 600, by the help of the Lord, God help us, we are able to acquire that land today. And then um, all the things um, we already designed, all the things that is going to be there, it's going to be another, another community of its own because it's, uh, that place is called the City of Knowledge is a city of its own whereby you are going to have the main of an angel. The acquisition of hectares of land opening endless opportunities for growth, it's a move in the right direction as it will pave way to accommodate more orphans, take care of aged people and provide the avenue for skills acquisition. We believe that we can, uh, we can make a change. We believe that uh, today where we are going is more uh, where we are going is is is, is 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 a place whereby that we, is unnegotiable and we believe on uh, this vision and this vision is a vision that we want that we change the mind of many people that is the reason why we are not moved by what we are doing today you are going to have school you are going to have a vocational center you are going to have a hospital and then we are going to have a we are going to have the remake, the meal of an that can contain at least 1,200 children.
because we want to raise young people, young children, who will have a better future. This is something that is ahead of us. And we are going to have a kitchen and dining whereby that uh, this uh, uh, 1,200 children can be on the dining table and eat this time. All our children here, they are in private school. And God help us so far, we are able to put them in private school because do, there are two things we pursue in our orphanage. Home. One, to make our children to be totally separated away from the world. Second, to make our children to have the best of education. Because I believe that if today um, our, our leaders they really have the fear of God, I don't think that our country will be like this today. And those children you see out there, they have, they have great things to offer to the world. And because of that, we are working hard to make sure that we give them the best of life. On our vocational center, we have a place whereby our children can learn. You can see this, thing, this sedative I'm wearing now. It was sold here on our fashion session because of um, we, what we did, we, we divide some of our children. Some to go to fashion and some to go to shoemaking. And um, sometimes they, they go to the music uh, department. The reason why we build it in this way because if tomorrow the child that is in primary school now secondary school, before that child we enter university, the child will have something doing. That even at your university, you don't depend on anybody before you before you make money. And then you are making money, and then at the end of it all, you find out that for you to even go to school is not a stressful thing to you. Why? If I, for instance, that I wish I was not having that, uh, that uh, handwork that time of uh, doing painting, I don't think I will be where I am today. And because of that, we make sure that uh, all our children, they engage on one or two things to enable them in their future for them to continue their life. It is important to emphasize the need for conducive and livable conditions for orphans as demonstrated by the Bethesda Orphanage Home and the innovative ideas of skills acquisition. It is hoped that humanitarian NGOs, individuals and the government will join hands with the Bethesda Orphanage Home to ignite a collective effort to ensure a brighter future for these resilient children. Together we can build lives and foster hope.